for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff at the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a full offensive breakdown for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over a Bills playbook scheme that I put out not too long ago. Other than that, I'm in the Buffalo Bills playbook. I've been working on getting a lot of stuff out for the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, a lot of offensive playbooks I really didn't get a ton of stuff out of that were kind of considered some of the better new books this year. And the Buffalo Bills is probably one of my favorite. Uh, I got a lot more. If you guys want me to continue with the Buffalo Bills, I'd love to put out a scheme out of the pistol spread. That's a formation that I really like to use a lot. But today, Today I'm going to be using the strong wing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys my four play setup and my audibles. Uh, there's only really one pass play you need in this particular formation and that's the drive. And the route that the fullback is running is one of the glitchier routes in the game. Nothing really covers it. I'm going to show you guys a way to make that play unstoppable. But other than that, the three run plays I'm going to go over today and I'll probably have some additional run plays on my Patreon and my Join Out Community tab are going to be the inside zone week. The halfback toss, which is probably one of the most explosive run plays in the, uh, the direction of the power side, which is the two tight end side the fullback side and then the halfback counter which is a really explosive run play to the opposite direction uh, where you really should meet less resistance based off the fact that there's really uh, you know your opponent's going to expect runs to the strong side so I have an explosive run play to the right explosive run play to the left now in this particular play since there's no fullback dive or anything like that just make sure you have your best blocking fullback uh, at the fullback spot on some of the future pass plays I'm going to switch that out for a running back but for now we're just going to go with a fullback there because that's going to help a blocking other than that let's go to start off with the inside zone week now as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors aoeh.com if you guys want to get your mutt team up and help this channel out at the same time all you have to do is check them out discount code money gets you three percent off but discount code email gets you six percent off anything on the website they do more than just mutt coins they do fifa they do uh nba 2k they do just about every game you can think of rocket league so if you guys play any of those games check them out use discount code email to get six percent off what's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market now as far as this uh series of plays goes like i said i'm just going to focus on these three plays the toss is probably going to be the MVP, the toss and the counter. As far as the toss goes, if you get a cover three, which is what this looks like here, cover three, cover four, anything where the cornerback's going to drop back, this is going to be probably the best play uh, in the formation. As you can see right here, I mean, I easily get outside, and I didn't really feel like I was even going that fast, but I easily get outside for like a 12-yard run. This particular play looks a little bit closer to a cover four. You can see the cornerbacks are playing back. The safeties are kind of close together, so this is probably cover four. Cover four, the safeties will shoot down and play the run a little bit better um, as far as pursuit goes but you can see we still have success to the outside pretty much any defense with the exception of cover two which is what this looks like here because the cornerbacks are playing down this play is going to have success against you can see right there the cover two cornerback does kind of cut off the angle but we still have success to the outside because we have so much blocking two tight ends fullback you name it this is someone that's going to have success against just about any defense now as far as the counter play goes if somebody is really dramatically shifting uh, over in the direction of the strong side uh, to try to take away some of these lanes and try to stop some of these runs that's when the counter play is going to really come in handy as you can see right here i mean this is not even really the direction that's considered going but you can see how there's a huge lane to open up right over the middle typically this type of defense here isn't really supposed to have a huge gap in the middle there the reason it has that is because of the offensive formation that i'm working with here uh it, it's just so widely spread that a lot of times the defensive alignment will have holes in it that aren't meant to be there which is one of the reasons this is a really good formation as you can see right here this is a play that's typically supposed to be run outside to the left but since I see that huge hole in that formation that hole is going to open up the same way that it typically would to the outside as you can see right here we just have a huge hole going right up the middle based on the fact that we have so much pulling guards and pulling action when it comes to the fullback and stuff like that I can really take whatever holes there so this is going to be something where like I said right here I break it off other than where it's expected to go but I still have a really explosive run this is really going to be best if your opponent is shifting in the direction of the tight ends, but I don't have, I'm not taking control of the defense, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, you can motion this guy in here. If I motion digs in, you can see there's a chance that he'll pick up that linebacker and give you a little bit of help on the blocking side of things. You can see we still have a really big hole. Even though I'm not getting an ideal look, I'm still getting a lot of success when it comes to running this play. This play has a lot of options, though, when it comes to motions that you can make. You can motion across one of these tight ends. You can motion across... Uh, motion in the receiver. Uh, none of them is really necessary though. This particular look here 
looks a little bit closer to what I was hoping for when it comes to uh, a gap uh, to, to switch over to the counter play as well. So we have the outside linebackers just a little bit spaced out far from the defensive tackle. This should really give me the look that I want. As you can see right here, he over pursues and that gives me a much better run lane. That's typically going to be the angle that you want. So once you see that hole, you really just have to watch for what this outside linebacker slash defensive end does. As you can see right here on this play, he plays it aggressively. He crashes down, coming right for the running back. At any point in time you see that look, you always have to take it inside behind the blocking uh, pulling guard. If he doesn't, if he hesitates, a lot of times they'll hesitate and kind of treat it like a read option. If he does that, you have to take it outside. It's really that simple. You really have two lead blockers here. Once the pulling guard does his job, then you go just basically to the fullback. You're just going from lead blocker to lead blocker, and you're going to get huge runs. Now, you also have an inside zone weak, which is also going to be successful against this type of look with a little bit more of a spread alignment. It's just a good inside run, as you're going to see here. I mean, basically, you know, that left tackle, it's like a counter just with no actual delay. So to me, the two best run plays are definitely going to be the toss and the counter, but you could always run this if you're just trying to pick up some easy yards. As you can see, I'm still not getting as much. The counter, I'm, I'm averaging about 10. This particular play, I'm averaging about 5. And then you also have the Power Alert X Smoke. The, uh, the smoke itself is really going to be best against anything. Cover 3, cover 4, once again. Anytime the cornerback drop back, you can see there, I got about 10 yards. That same thing goes for the Power. If it's a cover 3 or cover 4, you're going to have more success running it to the outside once again uh, when because the cornerback drops back. So this entire play is really meant to be used against cover 3 and cover 4 defenses. Although realistically, I think it's probably best just to throw this out and try to get, uh, you know, uh, just as long as you don't make a poor read. If you make a poor read and you run this against like a man coverage or something, you're probably throwing a pick six but as long as you make a good read this power play is just a really good uh, wrinkle to throw into your offense as long as you have a, a relatively agile fast receiver the pass play i'm going to show today though is going to be the strong wing drive now something very important because i'm running this for the fullback you're going to want to make sure that you put your fastest receiving running back at the fullback spot so for this team it's going to be matt breda we're lucky enough to have a 96 speed receiver we're going to pick the drive uh, on the defensive side we're going to start off with cover two and we're going to work our way back like we always do now the most important thing when it comes to this particular play is going to be the fullback and the fact that i can motion him out pretty much every single time when i put the b route here on a streak uh, although realistically you can do it with the a route you can do uh you can put the a route on a streak you can put the b route on a drag it really doesn't matter but the easiest way to remember to me is just put the b route on a streak i like the i like the a route as a dragging check down i think the b route is kind of important so we're going to put the b route on a streak and then we're going to motion motion out the RB route, but you don't even have to do that most of the time. On, on this particular play, on the first time that I try this, I'm going to motion this guy out to show you guys how easy it is. Uh, it's also really important to run it from a hash mark, especially when you're running it against like a cover two like I am now. So one of the best cornerbacks in the game just gets completely lost out here as Breda just completely smokes it. There wasn't really an underneath route drawing that cornerback down either, with the exception of uh, what the running back is doing in Moss. So if we watch the replay here, there really isn't an underneath route. It just This route's just glitchy, man. That's going to be the name of this video. It's a glitchy route. It gets outside of just about every single defense. As you can see here against cover two, and this is a cover two sink, which typically cover two sinks when there's nothing outside here will turn into a man match, and it didn't even do that. It just gets right past it, and I can throw the ball about 10 to 15 yards down the field. He's wide open for an easy one-play touchdown. And what makes this so glitchy is the motion itself. If I don't motion this out, if you just watch the running back you'll see i will get that man match look now where now the cornerback turns and runs with the with the receiver receiving running back even though i caught the ball anyway but for whatever reason the second i motion him out he gets forgotten about by a lot of different defenses you're going to see this in most coverages including man coverages and zone coverages he's going to get completely forgotten about by this cover two cornerback as for whatever reason he just doesn't decide to cover him there now there i threw the ball a little late that's why it wasn't a touchdown I'll go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, the B route, really his only job on this particular play is to pull back the safety, which he does a really good job of. But like I said, I mean, there, I also pass led to the boundary where I can easily just pass lead up. And you can see we're having explosive plays every single time, even though we're necessarily scoring every time, we're having a very big play. So we'll go and pick that again. We're gonna continue with zone coverage. So we're gonna do cover three. This is one of the few where it doesn't score a one play touchdown, but it still is a very glitchy play. So let's go and let's pick that. So we're gonna run this from the hash again. We always want to make our motion last because if I have to set up more of this play after I make the motion, it gives my opponent time to adjust to the motion. So once again, A route or B route, you can streak. On this particular play, I think the A route's best. You can see he just kind of streaks right up the middle there. The B route ain't bad. 
but you can you know you can get more from the inside tight on this particular play so on cover three might be better to do that but ultimately this play is still glitching to the running back as you're going to see here once again the running back will still get outside of this defense just a little bit of a bolt in the pass lead and you can see we're getting open underneath the cover three for a very easy catch and run so like i said always make that that uh, motion last make your adjustment and then boom we're going to have success here to the a route or to the rb route like I said, I'll take the RB route because if I can make this guy miss, even though I'm not, if I can make this guy miss, it's a very big catch and run. Going to do that one more time. Try to get this dude to miss. Like I said, Knox, obviously, too. You can see how far apart the, the cornerback and the, the tight ends are. Because I can throw that right away, get a big catch and run right up the middle, too. And if I have a fast enough tight end, I might be able to be going there. But you can see against cover three, there's two routes to get open. And then cover four is going to be the same way. So let's go and let's pick cover four regular first. It really glitches out cover four match. But let's pick cover four drop show two first. So same thing, same setup, although this time got to do that B route once again because that's going to pull back the cornerback. And then we're going to get open underneath that one more time, underneath that and outside for a very easy uh, catch and run once again. Only thing about this play is you don't really have the option for the tight end. The B route doesn't really do much, just pulls back coverage. But the X route will get open as well. So you do always have a second route. And then you got just got to make sure you get this play out there quick. I mean, if I get out there quick enough, I might be able to get up the sideline and go on. But you can see it's not really working out there. So let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, I feel like it's there because this play really just gets outside. It just gets forgotten by a lot of the, the zone coverages out here. And you can really get some big plays. Even against one of the best cornerbacks in the game, he's not doing anything to stop this. So if you think that's glitchy, just wait until you see what it does against cover four match. Completely destroys cover four course. So let's go and let's pick that. Exact same setup one more time. Exact same route one more time. Only this time, the tight end, for whatever reason, uh, just really pulls in that cornerback and lets this guy just, he just passes this guy off to a superstar player who just can't keep up in a linebacker. So exact same setup. We're going to motion this guy out. We're going to put the B route on a streak. And you're going to see how, for whatever reason, this cornerback just once again completely forgets about the RB route, basically passes it off to the linebacker, and we just get a very easy play down the field. Now, that wasn't a great pass, but you can see he just completely gets roasted. So, for whatever reason, the cornerback here just completely bails and takes the inside uh, tight end, leaving the, the curl flat or the seam flat to take over and be in control. Now, there I lobbed it when I probably should have bullet and pass led inside, but you can see he just completely is out of position based off the fact that he doesn't know he's supposed to cover this route until he's until it's too late. So that's pretty much it for all the zone coverages. It also has a lot of success against pretty much any man coverage. So it's going to pick that on the defensive side. We're going to start for cover one. Cover one typically plays off. Uh, that's something that you're going to see. A lot of times this linebacker won't even come to cover out, but here against cover one, he does. So you can see we have a linebacker covering that running back one more time. And you're going to see once again, because of the speed advantage, we're just going to get right past that and have a very big play. Because once again, this particular route is very good against man coverage. Wheel routes very uh, work very well against man coverage all the time. Now against cover one, you don't even have to make that motion out. The RB route is a wheel route. And because of the speed advantage, he's pretty much just going to beat whoever's uh, in coverage pretty much every single time so this play here if you're going against a man coverage like that you just run it and i know you're probably thinking what if there's a safety over the top well we're gonna go we're gonna do that too we're gonna go ahead we're gonna match this against cover two man if anybody's wondering how this will work against a smaller defense that's what the run plays are for check out the first video so ultimately once again cover two man for whatever reason against cover two man the, uh, the, the linebacker doesn't come out. And it's not because the cornerback's covering him. The cornerback is not going to cover him. This is going to be even easier because, once again, you got this guy wide open in the flat based on the fact that there's just nobody that motioned with him to cover him. Nobody motioned out to man him. Cover two man is the only defense that really does that. And that's one of the reasons I said when you run this play, make the running back motion last. Because a lot of times, you know, your opponent will have a chance to man a line or something like that. But he won't if the second you motion it out, he doesn't realize right away, oh, okay, this is this is a play where the running back is going to get out into the flat. They're going to get caught off guard. They're not going to have time to adjust. And you're going to have a very big play. Now, there's three more plays when it comes to this particular formation. But they're all pretty much the same. The PA power row, the PA sprint halfback flat, and the PA spot. They're all going to be pretty much the same concept. To me, the PA power is probably the best, though. So let's go and let's pick that. On the defensive side, we're just going to go random. This particular play here, the, the, the B route is just running a, uh, a simple corner route. And it's running at a depth that's probably best compared to the other plays. So that's why I like this particular play more than them. Now, the A route here, I'm just going to put him on a streak. In the other plays, you're just going to put the B route on a streak. I'll go over that shortly here in a minute. But ultimately, this is pretty much going to be the play. Cover two, cover three, cover four. The B route's going to be open pretty much every single time. I guess the man coverage like that, though, the drag is pretty much going to be the check down. You could drag or slant that receiver as well. 
But this particular play here, the A route streak is just going to pull everything back, and then the B route here is going to get open against most things. Here's a cover two. Like I say, it's going to get open right at the seam, mostly because the fullback is pulling down the cornerback. It's going to have that same effect, though, when it comes to cover three, which is what this looks like it might be. The cornerback is still going to get pulled back by that streak, even though the safety's there. And then you can see this particular route is going to get open against just about every single defense in the game. You can see the PA sprint halfback flat probably has a better uh, check down route, which is the receiver on the left there. He it does run a very good man beater. So let's go and let's pick that. But it's pretty much going to be the same route concept. The B is pretty much the same. The running back is a little bit different, but it's still a really good route. The B route there was actually wide open and I, I took the check down. I'm going to try to hit the running back one time. It looks like I'm getting a lot of cover threes. Here we go again. We got that cover three one more time. Like I say, he's going to get outside of that. Very easy play. Like I said, any zone coverage, those that particular route's going to get open. This here looks like we definitely have a man cover. So this is going to be something where uh, I definitely have more of an opportunity to the X route. As you can see right here, we get a little bit of a pressure as we had an all-out man blitz. And then, like I said, it's a very good man beater. It's the only reason I would choose this play over the first play I showed. Hopefully we can get one shot to that running back. Looks like we have an all-out man blitz once again. So that's it, that's the vid. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.